Good day from Western Australia. It's been six weeks since I've been on an aircraft. But tonight I'm taking my wife, my two sons, and their two girlfriends on Cathay Pacific to Japan. And we have 16 bags between six of us. Hello. It's like a football trip with all these people. TikTok. Well, this is interesting because normally at Perth Airport there are some counters for business class check-in, uh, certainly for Emirates and Singapore, but not for Cathay. So we come to these little kiosks, and because we're business, we get a helper. Check-in took us about 15 minutes, which is not bad for six people, and Tara was lovely. And now we're heading upstairs to the lounge. Bye, well, this is the Aspire Lounge, and I've been up here before, and you've probably seen one of my previous videos. I like the bar, it's a nice warm feeling. So the food offering here is, is okay, there's some nice fresh stuff here. There's oregano garlic chicken here. In this one, what have we got? Some rice. And down here, what looks like ravioli. Little snack. Well, the staff here are either um, disinterested or distracted because uh, we finished eating 35, 40 minutes ago. Put our plates over there and they're still sitting there. Good news, 53 minutes. Well, they've got some big problems in that lounge, I tell you. Nothing special tonight. Now it's off to gate 53 for our flight. Oh, Tonya, come this way. It saves you so much time. Jess, you're in the way. Lock down. Lock down! Okay. Quick! Ready, go! That was pretty quick boarding on this 777-300 aircraft. This is the ER. This seat converts into a fully lie flat bed. There's a, a little bit more room up at the shoulders than there obviously is down at the feet. And you can press this button and an armrest comes up, but it has to be down when we're taking off. We're about 30 minutes into the flight and the crew is madly rushing around trying to get their food ready because they know people would ideally like to go straight to sleep. It's only a seven hour flight. And the great news for me is that I've gone down the back, there are three business class seats with no people in them. So I've grabbed myself an extra pillow and an extra mattress and blanket, which never goes astray on an overnight flight. One of the things I love about this seat is that this screen pushes away and it gives you a completely open section in front of you. Now, if you've ever traveled on Qantas as business class, uh, it's great in lie flat and it's good in sit up, but if you want to semi recline, your knees hit the seat in front of you and it's quite an uncomfortable situation. Whereas with this seat, that's not a problem we experience. Anyway, food's coming out now, so uh, let me prep for that. I've just had a, a mouthful of the steak. It's a bit overdone, but beautifully presented. Tasty, has a lovely sauce, and I'm about to tuck into the potato. Well, I think the vegetables uh, were probably the highlight of the meal. Anyway, now it's on to uh, half a glass of drapier champagne. So what can I tell you about uh, that particular champagne? Well, it has, no, I can't even, pretend to know anything about champagne. No, oh, maybe I can. It has aromas of golden stone fruit, honeycomb, pastry and white flowers. I, I couldn't taste the white flowers. It was light. Um, <laughs> had some fine bubbles in it and uh, wonderful acidity. Cheers to us, huh? Anyway, now it's on to dessert and have a look what they presented me with here. I've got everything. Cheese plate, fruit, vanilla ice cream and panna cotta. Well the dessert really topped that off. The Ben and Jerry's ice cream sensational. The fruit excellent. The panna cotta right up there. Uh, cheese I'm not a great blue cheese person so uh, I like the Manchego which was this one. It's very good. All in all that was a very good meal. I'm going to give that an 8 out of 10. And now I'm going to make up my bed. Uh, and the crew fantastic. In fact, without even asking, the crew member serving me just brought me out all of this to try. Thank you, Cathay Pacific. I'm happy to report four hours sleep and they've woken us mainly with bright lights in the cabin for breakfast about 90 minutes out of Hong Kong. It looks all right, but I'm going to have breakfast in the lounge, so I said no. In the lead up to this flight, I'd read some reports online that the staff were disgruntled, unhappy, customers weren't happy with the service but well, I've been wrapped. I think the crew have been tremendous and they walk with absolute speed up and down this aisle. Um, there's certainly no lethargy here. I thought I'd go and ask my fellow travel partners what they thought of the flight. Very good, it's fantastic. Yeah, very good. I'll talk to you in a minute.
excellent flight, excellent crew into Hong Kong, now a couple of hours on the ground. And I thought I might go and have a look at all four of the um, lounges that we're allowed access to and see which one stacks up as the best. This is Cathay's first class lounge, the pier. It's near gate 63. The bar is open, it's 9.40 a.m. And here is a selection of food. Well, that little eating area there is for light, snacky stuff, but uh, there's a dining room here where you can order. So let's go. Dining room down there. Tom, there's a dining room down there. This is the Piers restaurant. You can order a, uh, a menu. We've got obviously breakfast coming out and uh, got some eggs. Some of these guys have got noodles, but it's a really nice atmosphere here and the staff from all over the world. Delightful to be around. Well, I recommend the breakfast. Not so much the Western one with the egg, but uh, both of those noodle dishes were stunning. Well, that was a really simple, elegant, classy lounge with lovely service and good food. I did want to show you the Qantas first lounge, but we've been distracted on our way and it's quite a long walk, so I doubt whether we're actually going to get there. I feel like I'm good at this. This lounge is on level seven. The one we were in before was uh, below the main departure level. It's certainly a bigger space than the pier lounge, but I don't think the food's as good because you can't order off a menu, which is a lovely thing to do. With that said, we're now going to have to rush back. We've got about nine minutes to go before uh, we board, and it's quite a long walk. We're on board our second of two flights today, and this is a uh, 777-300, but this is 21 and a half years old, this plane. And as you can see, it's a 232 seating, and this is one of the most ordinary business classes you can find on a 777. What I like about Cathay on board here is that they go to their highest tier flyers first and ask them for their order so that if you're platinum or emerald, whatever you are in their system, you've got a better chance of getting the meal you want. And if you're just a first time flyer, well, you might have to end up with what's left over. And what is on the menu today? For today, we have the uh, Chinese style, the chicken uh, with uh, vegetable rice. And also we have the red wine beef with mashed potato. And the last one is the uh, Japanese halibut with rice. four hours is our flying time. There are about 15 seats free here in business class out of the 42. Well I've just finished lunch and I've got to tell you it was damn good. It started off with a prawn and tuna appetizer which was delightful. Great noodles. For main course I had the beef, Tonya had the chicken. Both were tasty and then for dessert it was a little bit of ice cream and some fruit. We're just coming into land now and it's unbelievable outside. It's just rectangles of snow after rectangles of snow. It's all goes well for a great ski holiday. Step straight out here into the cold. You can feel it around your legs. I've got my scarf on because we're gonna need it, but well done to Cathay. There were two great flights. And I was nervous because I'd read some negative stuff as I mentioned earlier on in this video, but no, I rate that airline after those two flights today. Food, service, seats, although well, the second cabin wasn't as good as the first. And now we head off to go through customs and immigration and get our ski holiday started. Well, it's uh, colder than zero, I think, out here. And we're still waiting for our bus. <laughs> it's an Ilman tradition to frequent the vending machine straight up. Once we got going, the trip from Sapporo to Naseko was about two and a quarter hours, most of it at 50 kilometers an hour, and that was the maximum. Dropped down to 40 a couple of times. Oh, and we saw a deer crossing. That was nice. Of course, driving in the snow is a challenge for someone who doesn't do it that often, and finding the left-hand side of the road is interesting. Thankfully, these arrows give you some idea. We rolled up to the Keo Hotel, where the staff were fantastic, and just about everybody here in Naseko speaks English. And then it was into our room the penthouse and my gosh isn't this a treat it is something special overlooks the family run and it is true ski in ski out but more about that in an upcoming video anyway i've got to head off skiing now for the 50 percent of you who have not subscribed please do so now like the video as well and for a whole lot of extra f1 content merchandise pictures this is where you need to go thanks for watching and stay, stay passionate, passionate.
The other funny bit, Jack, is I've got the other microphone, so I can speak, I can commentate at the same time. 